Good morning and welcome to our Dennis's Client Services webinar. My name is Amber Neely. I'm the Assistant Director of Clinical and Professional Services here at Genesis, and I am also a women and children's therapist. I'm joined here with um, two of our other therapists, Charlotte Weatherford and Jordan Gates. And so we're going to be um, talking about some parenting stuff today. But before we get into that, I just wanted to go over a few um, reminders. So remember that this presentation is for educational purposes only. Um, and also as we're talking about different situations and examples, um, please be sure to consider your own situation and safety concerns before putting into practice any of the ideas that we talk about today. So with regards to safety, please make sure that you're watching this webinar in a safe place where only safe people can hear it. So that might mean that you're wearing headphones while you're watching this to ensure that nobody else can hear uh, what you're watching. Also remember to clear your browser history after watching the video if you suspect that somebody's monitoring your phone or computer. If you're watching with us live on Zoom, um, please be sure to click leave meeting and end a couple of times and close out the Zoom page. Regarding confidentiality, and if you're joining us live on Zoom, please do not use the chat feature. If you use the chat feature, your name and comment will be seen by anybody else watching this live video recording. Um, and also we put these recordings on our YouTube channel. And so with that in mind, also on our YouTube channel, please do not leave any comments um, because anyone that watches the video will be able to see your name and comment. Okay, if you are in crisis or needing help with emergency safety planning or you're looking for emergency shelter, please call our 24 hour hotline at 214-946-4357 and one of our advocates can help you with that. Um, if you're not a current client of ours and you're needing some counseling regarding domestic violence, go ahead and give us a call at 214-389-7700. Okay, and if you have any questions, I know we're going to cover a lot today and we've been covering a lot in all of these webinars. So if you ever have any questions, please contact me or Jordan or Charlotte. Our contact information Will be left at the end of this webinar it's left at the end of every webinar that's on our youtube channel as well so you can always just reach out to us directly by phone or email if you have any questions again we don't monitor or respond to any comments or questions left on our youtube page so you'll have to contact us directly again want to share some hotlines with all um so our genesis women's shelter hotline is 214-946-4357 if you're not here locally, or even if you are, um, there's the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Um, the National Hotline can search for resources in your area based on your zip code, so it's a very good resource. And then also we know that when women experience domestic violence or trauma, that sometimes there are thoughts of hopelessness or even suicidal thoughts. And so if you're having any thoughts like that, please call the National Suicide Hotline or give us a call and you can call any of these three numbers and we are here to help and support you with that. Okay, so we are talking today about dealing with child protective services. We know that oftentimes when domestic violence is happening in a family, that Child Protective Services can get involved for various reasons. And so um, in Lundy's book, When Dad Hurts Mom, he has a whole chapter on this. And so we're going to kind of dig into that chapter and explore some of this stuff. Just wanted to share some other things that you can find out of this book. This is what it looks like. You can find it on Amazon. Um, Lundy probably owes us a lot of money because we've been trying to sell all his books through all these webinars. But um, in this book, Understanding the Effects of Domestic Violence, You Can Help Your Children Heal Emotionally, Guides Mothers and Providing Their Children with Love, Support and Positive Role Model, Even in the Midst of Abuse, This is Still Possible. Um, he also has, like I said, this chapter here on CPS and court systems and successing custody cases, and then gives you ideas to help children feel good about themselves. I always want to go over this in all of our presentations. We want to talk about what the impact of domestic violence is on a child. And remember, when we're talking about domestic violence, um, we're specifically referring to intimate partner violence, right? So these are threats, verbal abuse, physical abuse, um, humiliation. This is creating an atmosphere in which the mom is disrespected by the dad. 
right? Her voice is silenced, she's bullied or treated like a servant. Um, this brings great distress and confusion to children. It makes them have a difficult time understanding how they're supposed to treat their mother. Um, this also creates tension between mother and child. In addition, we also see um, that this can create division amongst siblings. Sometimes we've got one sibling that's really aligned with the abusive parent, and we have one sibling that is really aligned with the parent that is the victim of that abuse. And so that can cause a lot of division amongst siblings. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna talk about CPS and um, caseworkers and child welfare workers. So these are people whose job it is to explore claims of child abuse or endangerment and compose a formal statement. And so here in Texas, that's the Department of Family and Protective Services, also known as Child Protective Services. And so their role is to explore claims, claims of child abuse and endangerment. And so I think that's really important to know that the job of the role of the caseworker is to serve the child. It's not necessarily for the parents, it's about the child. The goal is in the state of Texas is typically gonna be reunification. And so they are working towards keeping that child with their biological parents. And so some of the responsibilities of a caseworker include um, making every effort to join with you as a team. They shouldn't have any preconceived notions, judgments, or biases towards you. Um, cooperation and working together as a team is necessary. So we know that this is the expectation, but sometimes you might have a worker that does have these biases or judgments. And so we'll talk about things that you can do when things aren't going as they should. Remember to give yourself time. Um, Caseworkers should understand that you need to um, make a safety plan and you need to figure out if your partner is really going to change and to gain or regain inner strength and to support your children in every possible way. This situation should not be overlooked, but it also shouldn't be um, unrealistic, right? Like these are things that cannot just change overnight. And so the expectation shouldn't be that it is going to. These workers should have extensive education on domestic abuse and its impact on families this means the caseworker should be trained on issues related to domestic violence situations and should also have education on the effects it has on children so um, every you know department is different and the trainings that they receive are different you know one of the things that we do here at genesis is help our clients and advocate for them with these um, situations and help to provide that education to their caseworkers um, if they're if they're needing some more information on the effects of um, domestic violence or specifically how it's impacted the child that there is involved in this case. So I'm going to pass it to Charlotte and she's going to keep talking a little bit more about caseworkers and child welfare workers. Hey everybody. So um, yes, to, to continue on with some expectations that you might have with when you're working with caseworkers and child welfare workers. Um, you should never feel like you're being bullied by your caseworker. Um, they should be maintaining a supportive and trusting environment for you and your family and the caseworker should not be using threats and should not, um, they should be helping you to make decisions that they believe are going to be best for you and your children. So it should never be a situation where you feel bullied. It should be a situation in which you feel um, supported and that they're helping you make the decisions that are going to be best for your family. Um, when assessing the severity of the effect your partner has had on your children and his current level of dangerousness. So this caseworker should not be making assumptions about the abuse that's been going on, um, but instead they should be discussing these specific experiences with each family member and really gathering information from each particular family member um, and what they've experienced. The level of dangerousness of your partner to you and your children should also be assessed um, so that they have a really accurate view and perspective of the danger, um, how each child has been affected, how you've been affected, um, and really a, an accurate picture of what's going on in the home. Um, a caseworker should be assessing your efforts to protect your children as well. So we know that um, you're making every effort that you can to keep your children safe and so your caseworker needs to know all of those efforts and all of those um, 
the, the decisions that you've made to keep your children safe. So learning about the attempts that you've made um, to keep them safe from the abuser um, and should also the caseworker should also be respecting you and your decisions, knowing that um, as a mother, you're gonna be making the best decision that you can with the information that you have in the moment. Um, the appropriate information should also be offered to you. Discussing the options and making plans is important at this time. Um, so just really having that collaborative um, effort and giving you the information that you need, discussing pros and cons and options and making a plan. A caseworker should offer you resources to protect you and your children. Um, so whether this is programs for abused women, counseling services, child care assistance, food stamps, whatever your needs might be, um, your caseworker should be helping you to find these resources. Um, they should also be respecting your history of efforts to seek help. So the caseworker should keep in mind that you may have previously tried to gain insight about your situation by using other resources and also be asking you questions about that and gathering all of that information as well. Caseworkers should also be placing focus on the abusive man, as at least as just as much as you. Um, the caseworker should meet with your partner and provide him with the necessary resources and programs for which he can attend. Um, the caseworker should also be cooperating with legal officials and other agencies that will help the abuser fall through with these responsibilities and consequences for his actions and behavior. So um, this should not just be um, support for you. This should also be offering resources to the abusive parent and offering them the help that they need um, to change their behavior. They should also be understanding if you can't talk about the abuse right away. Um, the caseworker should be aware and understanding of your feelings at this time. This is a difficult time, difficult things to talk about, and it may take you some time. Um, the caseworker should always keep in mind this can be very dangerous and a traumatic situation for you, and the protection of your children is critical. Um, they should always be treating you in a non-discriminatory way. Um, this just goes across the board. You should never feel like you're being discriminated against or treated um, poorly or disrespectfully. And, in, and at the bottom line, caseworkers should be trying to keep their mothers and children together as much as possible. Like Amber was saying, the sole purpose of caseworkers and child welfare workers is the protection and safety of children. Um, and they can also trying to keep mothers and children together as much as possible in family. Now I'm going to pass it along to Jordan and she'll be talking about some common errors that we see in child protective services. Hi, um, so oftentimes when people are working with Child Protective Services, they can have some negative experiences with their caseworker. And so Lundy in his book talks about some common errors in Child Protective Responses um, that you know are important to know when working with them. Um, so some common errors are refusing to believe her about the abuse. So especially when caseworkers are working with both parties Right, they're hearing different stories constantly. And so sometimes um, they don't have a lot of knowledge on domestic violence um, or they're not believing the mother about what's happening to her and the kids in the household. Um, again, not understanding the dynamics of abuse. So again, right, they are not, not all caseworkers are experts in domestic violence. And so this can be a common error um, and it also can make it really difficult to work with them when they do not have that understanding of what the um, mother is going through. Sometimes um, they will hold the mother exclusively responsible for their child's welfare um, and safety, right? And so that's not fair, of course, because it's the responsibility of both parents. Another one is um, racial, cultural, ethnic, or class discrimination, right? And so you should be able to receive services in an extremely ethical and moral way. And so if this is a concern, definitely reach out for help. Um, you know, do research, see who your caseworker supervisor is, and um, report that because you deserve to receive these services in an ethical way. Um, and then uh, the last one is bullying you. So again, right, sometimes um, they can put the blame on you or make you feel responsible for things that are not your fault. And so definitely seek help if any of these things are happening, help, are happening to you. And then this next slide, we're gonna talk about what you can do. 
when working um, with Child Protective Services. Um, so if things are going well, if you are reserving these services in an ethical way, um, it is important to be able to get along with the professionals in your case, right? Um, so you guys can work together for what's best for you and your family. Um, definitely get the support resources and assistances, assistance that you need, right? So reach out to a domestic violence agency such as Genesis. Um, seek counseling. Um, use the resources available to you that can help you get through these difficult times. Research your rights and make sure they are upheld. Again, if anything that's happening um, in the previous slide that I just talked about, definitely do your research. Know your rights. Um, you can reach out to a Genesis, a place like Genesis to have that knowledge um, and seek help when you need it. Be cooperative um, as much as possible. It can be really hard, right? Because you care about your kids more than anybody else in the world. And so it can be really hard or often feel like you're being attacked. And so if you can be as cooperative and professional as possible when working with them, um, deal directly with any problems that you have developed. So two of the most common problems that Lundy talks about um, with mothers who are abused are um, can be substance abuse um, and taking out some of um, that frustration on your children, right? And so you deserve that self-care and um, to take care of yourself. And so definitely reach out for support. It can be a really, really stressful time and you can be doing it all on yourself, right? Dad's constantly interfering with your parenting. You do not have that help. And so um, you can sometimes develop some unhealthy coping habits. And so just remember to take care of yourself and um, to get that support you deserve. Speak specialized, seek specialized services like we've talked about attempt to educate your caseworkers um, on domestic violence or just refer them to a place like Genesis or reach out to a place like Genesis. We do a ton of advocating for our clients and helping caseworkers gain more knowledge about domestic violence. Um, you know, like we've talked about through all of these PowerPoints, right, um, is it in webinars, it is important, right, to educate yourself about domestic violence, how it's affecting you, how it's affecting your family, and then if needed, um, of course, get legal help. Again, reach out to a place like Genesis if you need further assistance. Thanks, Jordan. And I just wanted to add that with the legal help, most attorneys will do a free consultation, and so if you're, um, if you have an open CPS case, you know, there are lawyers that specialize um, in these situations and they'll often do like a free consultation. So if you can't afford to pay for a lawyer, you might be able to speak to one and just get some information and advice. And then also just looking at the, you know, the website and researching on what the laws are and what your rights are if you're, if you're dealing with these cases. We know that sometimes things don't go the way that they're supposed to go. And so, you know, they're here in Texas, there is the Office of the Attorney General and they, um, they are kind of oversee um, CPS. And if there are any things that have gone wrong in your case, or if you feel that you were discriminated against, you can always make um, a, um, a complaint. I'm sorry, not the Office of the Attorney General, Office of Consumer affairs, you can always make a complaint there. And so you can look, locate that number on the um, Department of Family and Protective Services website if you need to use that resource. So again, we just wanna always end in reminding you that in taking the time to watch these webinars and, and educate yourself and learn about how domestic violence may be impacting your family, you've taken a really brave step towards healing for yourself as well as your family. Remember your role as a mom, right? Mothers hold their children's hands for a short while, but their hearts forever. So thank you so much for watching. Um, Again, here's our contact information. And if you have any questions or concerns about anything that we talked about, please feel free to reach out to us. Thanks so much. Bye.